Revington near breaking point, the 37 competitors roared towards the near disastrous first turn of their 129 laps. And Johnson should be first into the first corner. But what As about Johnson's Fury power packed Ford hit at Brock and Fury, cars tried to push through the tight corner. The inevitable happened. Cullen hit Moffat, pushing him into the inside of the circuit and cannonballing across the field. Gary Rogers in the Jansen car was right in the thick of the action. A typical start, they just all crashed in together and someone Biff Warren Cullen over into the front of me. I had a good run actually. I was on the outside with a clear run through. They just biffed him across in front of me and there was nothing I could do, I just ran into him. The big green thunder mumba pulled away and Dick gave Wide World of Sports his track impressions. Basically, I don't mind the circuit at all. It's uh, it's quite different, and uh, it's all so much tighter than it ever has been before. Uh, we have power steering on our car, which is a hell of an advantage because uh, after a few laps, you, your arms do start to get sore. But uh, one could say that you are busier than a bricklayer in Beirut around here because it is very tight. It was Johnson, Brock, Grice, one, two, three, and the battle for fourth raged between Harvey, Fury, and Moffat as they threaded their way through traffic and showed that all come to grips with the new tight track sections. Jim Richards kept them in sight, three-wheeling the JPS BMW. Lap 13, Moffat made his move. First, Fury at the end of the straight to fifth. Then, 43 seconds later, the Mazda weaved its way into fourth, going into Harvey's new Commodore. The race action at the front heated up. Grice passed Brock. Lap 33 of 129, as Johnson powered on into the lead, the Fury Scott car into the pits and out. Team manager Howard Marsden. With the turbocharged engines, we have a lot of pressure at the cylinder head, and unfortunately, one of the gaskets there has let go and let the water out of the engine. We're overheating, we're tired. Brock's pits signalled a possible problem. Brock in, Perkins out, and a near miss on pit alley. There had been tyre trouble. By the puncture, it was just a very sharp piece of metal through the uh, centre of the tyre. Well, I guess that could happen to anyone, so I, it wasn't a fault of the tyre. Lap 37, race leader Johnson pitted, but his face told the story. Dick, disappointing, mate. Mate, you could say that, yeah. Very disappointing. What's the problem? Oh, it's just as I suspected that uh, gearboxes are going to be the problem around here. You know, there's just so much work for a gearbox. You are running so well, though. Mate, I was doing it easy, real easy. The car feels magnificent, so uh, all I can say is they better look out at Bathurst. So on lap 39, after dropouts and pit stops, Alan Grice took over the lead from Harvey and Richards. But the troubles for the front runners continued. Jansen took over from Rogers, but would only get to the end of the straight before a $2.50 bearing would make him a spectator. Alan Jones, played with a bad head cold, took over from Cullen and roared out to the delight of the crowd. And if you've ever tried to close a car door at over 100 miles per hour, you'll know how David Parsons felt after taking over from Johnny Harvey. Lap 49, race leader Alan Grice, Pitts. Hot out there. You're looking pretty hot, mate. Yeah, the car's very good. The track's starting to get a lot of black marks. A little bit slippery. Our tyres are hanging out very well. There's nothing wrong with the car. It's fine. The crew seems very happy they applauded you as you came in. Yeah, I think the... Uh, it was probably the quickest stop of the day by the sound of the applause too. The boys pulled a very quick stop there. We'll take some beat from here, I think. So it was Harrington, now driving with a broken accelerator, Richards and Brock. But it wasn't going to be Richards' day. The BMW limped into the pits after 73 laps. A philosophical Frank Gardner told the story. A little bit of overheating in the diff. Uh, I think we're a little bit undercooled in the cooler department and uh, we'll just have to come here with a bigger cooler can. On the 103rd lap, Grice slowed, and it was his turn. It's um, second gear, constant velocity joint, I'd say. Peter Brock took over the lead, with a smiling Alan Moffat now in second spot. Yeah, well, when you've got an RX-7, you can take the, the good with the bad, and we're, we're, we're cutting it today. Carby problems then put Jones and Cullen well back after a great effort. It was now clear sailing for Brocky. Or was it? He comes Brock into the pits for an, for an emergency stop. Two laps to go, he He's pitted for fuel. One false move and the race was Moffat's. But out came the welcome checkered flag. And 
the race was Brock's. And Peter Brock wins the Castrol 500 for 1984 among scenes of jubilation. Well, Australia's first international motor racing circuit, Sandown of Victoria, had a great christening. 129 hard-fought laps in the Castrol 500. One, of course, by 05, Peter Brock. Time to pack up the gear, get set for Bathurst. In the meantime, Mike and Dean, I'm going to go out and get a bit more practice. See you soon. That's when I like investing in cars that aren't moving. <laughs> <laughs>